Squinty on a Journey. Mama, did you hear what they were saying about Squinty? asked Woof Woof as the boy and the two men walked away from the pig pen. Oh, yes, I heard, said Mrs. Pig. I shall be sorry to lose Squinty, but then we pigs have to go out and take our places in this world. We cannot always stay at home in the pen. Yes, that is so, spoke Mr. Pig, but Squinty is rather young and small to start out. However, it may all be for the best. Now, Squinty, you had better keep yourself nice and clean so as to be ready to go on a journey. What's a journey? asked the comical little pig, squinting his eye up at Papa Pig. A journey is going away from home, answered Mr. Pig. And does it mean having adventures? asked Squinty, flopping his ears backward and forward. Yes, you may have some adventures, replied his mother. Oh, dear Squinty, I wish you didn't have to go and leave us, but still, it may be all for your good. We might hide him under the straw, suggested Woof Woof. Then that boy could not find him when he comes to put him in a box and take him away. No, that would never do, said Mr. Pig. The farmer is stronger and smarter than we are. He would find Squinty no matter where we hit him. It is better to let him do as he pleases and take Squinty away, though we shall all miss him. Oh, dear, cried Curly Tail, for she liked her little brother very much, and she loved to see him look at her with his funny squinting eye. Do you want to go, Squinty? Well, I don't want to leave you all, answered the comical little pig, but I shall be glad to go on a journey and have adventures. I hope I don't get lost again, though. I guess the boy won't let you get lost, spoke Mr. Pig. He looks as though he would be kind and good to you. The pig family did not know when Squinty would be taken away from them, and all they could do was to wait. While they were doing this, they ate and slept as they always did. Squinty, several times, looked at the hole under the pen by which he had once gotten out. He felt sure he could again push his way through and run away, but he did not do it. No, I will wait and let the boy take me away, thought Squinty. Several times after this, the boy and his sisters came to look down into the pig pen. The pigs could tell by the talk of the children that they were brother and sisters, and they had come to the farm to spend their summer vacation when there was no school. That's the pig I'm going to take home with me, the boy would say to his sisters, pointing to Squinty. How can you tell which one is yours? asked one of the little girls. I can tell by his funny squint, the boy would answer. He always makes me want to laugh. Well, I am glad I am of some use in this world, thought Squinty, who could understand nearly all that the boy and sister said. It is something just to be jolly. I wouldn't want a pig, said the other girl. They grunt and squeal and are not clean. I'd rather have a rabbit. Pigs are so clean, cried the boy. Squinty is as clean as a rabbit. Only that day Squinty had rolled over and over in the mud, but he had had a bath from the hose, and so he was clean now, and he made up his mind that if the boy took him, he would never again get in the mud and become covered with dirt. I will keep myself clean and jolly, thought Squinty. A few days after this, Squinty heard the noise of hammering and sawing wood outside the pig pen. The farmer must be building another barn, said Mr. Pig, for he and his family could not see outside the pen. Yes, he must be building another barn, for once before we heard the sounds of hammering and sawing, and then a new barn was built. But that was not what it was this time. Soon the sound stopped, and the farmer and the boy came and looked down into the pen. Now, are you sure you want that squinty one? the farmer asked the boy. Some of the others are bigger and better. No, I want the squinty one, the boy said. He is so comical. He makes me laugh. All right, answered the farmer. I'll get him for you now that you have the crate all made to carry him home in on the cars. Over into the pig pen jumped the farmer. He made a grab for Squinty and caught him. Squee! 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 squealed Squinty, for he had never been squeezed so tightly before. 
Oh, I'm not going to hurt you, said the farmer kindly. Squinty, be quiet, ordered his papa in the pig language. Behave yourself. You are going on a journey and will be all right. Then Squinty stopped squealing as the farmer climbed out of the pen with him. At last, I am going on a journey, and I may have many adventures, thought the little pig. Goodbye, he called to his papa and mama and brothers and sisters left behind in the pen. Goodbye! Goodbye! They all grunted and squealed. Be a good pig, said his mama. Be a brave pig, said his papa. And, and come back and see us sometime, sniffled little Curly Tail, for she loved Squinty very much indeed. I'll come back, said the comical little pig, but he did not know how much was to happen before he saw his pen again. There you go, into the box with you, cried the farmer as he dropped Squinty into a wooden box the boy had made for his pet with a hammer saw and nails. Squinty found himself dropped down on a bed of clean straw. In front of him, behind him, and on either side of him were wooden slats, the sides of the box. Squinty could look out, but the slats were as close together as those in the chicken coop, and the little pig could not get out. He did not want to, however, for he had made up his mind that he was going to be a good pig and go with the boy who had bought him for a pet from the farmer. Over the top of the box was nailed a cover with a handle to it, and by this handle the pig in the little cage could be easily carried. There you are, exclaimed the farmer. Now, he'll be all right until you get him home. And when I do, I'll put him in a nice big pen and feed him well, said the boy. Squinty smacked his lips at that, for he was hungry even now. Oh, have you caged him up? Isn't he cute? exclaimed one of the boy's sisters. I'll give him the core of my apple, and she thrust it through the slats of the box. Squinty was very glad indeed to get the apple core, and he soon ate it up. Come on, cried the boy's father. Is the pig nailed up? We must go for the train. I wonder what the train is, thought Squinty. He was soon to know. The boy lifted him up, cage and all, and put him into the wagon that was to go to the depot. Squinty knew what a wagon was and horses, for he had seen them many times. Then away they started. Squinty gave a loud squeal, which was his last goodbye to the other pigs in the pen, and then the wagon rattled away along the road. Squinty had started on his journey. Squinty the comical pig tried to look out through the slats of the box in which he was being taken away to see in which direction he was going. He also wanted to watch the different sights along the road. But the sides of the farm wagon were so high that the little pig could see nothing. He stretched his fat neck as far as it would go, but that did no good either. Squinty wished he were as big as his papa or his mama. Then I could see what is going on, he thought. But just wishing never made anyone larger or taller, not even a pig, and Squinty stayed the same size. He could hear the farmer and the children talking. Now and then the boy who had bought Squinty, who was taking him home, would look around at his pet in the slatted box. Is he all right? one of the girls would ask. He seems to be, the boy would say. I'm glad I got him. Well, he acts real cute, said another girl, who was called Sally, but I never heard of having a pig for a pet before. Just you wait until I teach him some tricks, said the boy, whose name was Bob. Then you'll think he's fine. Ha! So I am to learn tricks, thought Squinty in his box. I wonder what tricks are anyhow. Does it mean I am to have good things to eat? I hope so. You see, Squinty, like most little pigs, thought more of something to eat than of anything else. But we must not blame him for that, since he could not help it. Pretty soon the wagon rattled over some stones and then came to a stop. Here we are, called the children's father. Bring along your little pig, Bob. Here comes the train. Ha! Huh? It seems I am to go on a train, thought Squinty. I wonder what a train is. Squinty had many things to learn, didn't he? The little pig in the box felt himself being lifted out of the wagon. 
Then he could look about him. He saw a large building in front of which were long, slender strips of shining steel. These were the railroad tracks, but Squinty did not know that. Then all at once Squinty heard a loud noise, which went like this. Oh my! What a loud squeal that pig has! exclaimed Squinty. He can squeal much louder than I can, I think. Let me try. So Squinty went, Squee! 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 And then the big noise sounded again, louder than before. Whee! Whee! said Squinty to himself, snuggling down in the straw of his box. I never can squeal as loud as that, never! He looked out and saw a big black thing rushing toward him with smoke coming out of the top, and then the big black thing cried out again. Oh, what a terrible big black pig, thought Squinty, and he was a bit frightened. But it was not a big black pig at all. It was only the engine drawing the train of cars up to the station to take the passengers away. And it was going to take Squinty also. Squinty thought the engine whistle was a pig squeal, but it wasn't, of course. Pretty soon, the train stopped. The passengers made a rush to get in their cars. Bob, the boy, caught up the handle of Squinty's box, and after some bumping and tilting sideways, the little pig found himself set down in a rather dark place, for the boy had put the box on the floor of the car by his seat near his feet. And there Squinty rode, seeing nothing but hearing many strange noises, until after many stops he was lifted up again. Here we are, the little pig heard the children's papa say. Have you everything? Don't forget your pig, Bob. I won't, answered the boy with a jolly laugh. Well, I wonder what will happen next, thought Squinty, as he felt himself being carried along again. He could see nothing but a crowd of persons all about the boy who carried the box. I don't know whether I am going to like this or not, this coming to live in town, thought the little pig. Still, I cannot help myself, I suppose, but I do wish I had something to eat. I guess the boy must have known Squinty was hungry, for when he next set down the box, this time in a carriage, the boy gave the little pig a whole apple to eat, and how good it did taste to Squinty. Are you going to make a pen for him? asked one of the little boy's sisters as the carriage drove off. Yes, as soon as we get to the house, said the boy. By this time, Squinty was thirsty. There was no water in his cage, but a little later, when he saw through the slats that he was being carried toward a large white house, he was given a tin of water to drink. I'll just leave him in that box until I can fix a larger one for him, the boy said, and then, for a while, Squinty was left all to himself. But he was still in the box, though the box was set in a shady place on the back porch. All this while Mr. and Mrs. Pig, as well as the brothers and sister pigs in the pen at home, were wondering what had happened to Squinty. Where do you think he is now, Mama? Woof Woof would ask. Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Pig answered. And will he ever come back to us? asked Twisty Tail. Perhaps some day I hope so, said Mrs. Pig, sort of sighing. Oh, yes, I think he will, said Mr. Pig. When he gets quite large, the boy will get tired of having him for a pet and perhaps bring him back. Were you ever carried off that way, Papa? asked Grunter as he rubbed his back where a mosquito had bitten him against the side of the pen. Oh, yes, once answered Mr. Pig. I was taken away from my pen when I was pretty large and given to a little girl for a pet. But she did not keep me long. I guess she would rather have had her dolls. So I was soon brought back to my pen, and I was glad of it. Well, I hope they will soon bring Squinty back, Woof Woof said. It is lonesome without him. 
But after a while, the other pigs found so many things to do, and they were kept so busy eating sour milk and getting fat that they nearly forgot about Squinty. But all this time, something was happening to the comical little pig. Toward evening of the first day that Squinty had been put in the new little cage, the boy, who had not been near him in some time, came back to look at his pet. Now I have a larger place for you, the boy said, speaking just as though Squinty could understand him. And in fact, Squinty did know much of what was said to him, though he could not talk back in boy language, being able to speak only his own pig talk. And I guess you are hungry, too, and want something to eat, the boy went on. I will feed you. Squee! 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 squealed Squinty. If there was one word in man talk that he understood very well, it was feed. He had often heard the farmer say, Well, now I must feed the pigs. And right after that, some nice sour milk would come splashing down into the trough of the pen. So when Squinty heard the word feed again, he guessed what was going to happen, and he guessed right, too. The boy picked Squinty up, box and all, and carried him to the backyard. Now I'll give you more room to run about, and then I'll have a nice supper for you, the boy said, talking to his little pig just as you would to your dog or kitty. With a hammer, the boy knocked off some of the slats of the small box in which Squinty had made his journey. Then the boy lifted out the comical pig, and Squinty found himself inside a large box, very much like the pen at home. It had clean straw in it and a little trough, just like the one at his home where he could eat. But there was nothing in the trough to eat as yet, and the box seemed quite lonesome, for Squinty was all alone. Here you are now, some nice sour milk and boiled potatoes, cried the boy, and then Squinty smelt the most delicious smell, to him at least. Down in the trough came the sour milk and potatoes. Squee! Squee! yelled Squinty in delight, and how fast he ate. That was because he was hungry, you see, but pigs nearly always eat fast, as though they were continually in a hurry. Oh, isn't it cute? exclaimed a voice over Squinty's head. He looked up, half shutting his one funny eye and cocking one ear up and letting the other droop down. But he did not stop eating. Oh, isn't he funny? cried another voice, and Squinty saw the boy and his sisters looking at him. Yes, he surely is a nice pig, the boy said. In a few days, when he gets over being strange, I'm going to teach him some tricks. Ha! There's that word tricks again, thought Squinty. I wonder what tricks are, but I shall very soon find out. For a few days, Squinty was rather lonesome in his new pen all by himself. He missed his papa and mama and brothers and sisters. But the boy came to see Squinty every day, bringing him nice things to eat. And after a bit, Squinty came to look for his new friend. I guess you are getting to know me, aren't you, old fellow? The boy said one day after feeding Squinty, and he scratched the little pig on the back with a stick. Oof, oof, grunted Squinty. That, I suppose, was his way of saying, Of course I know you, and I like you, boy. One day, about a week after he had come to his new home, Squinty heard the boy say, Now, I think you are tame enough to be let out. I don't believe you will run away, will you? But anyhow, I'll tie a string to your leg, and then you can't. Squinty wished he could speak boy language and tell his friend that he would not run away as long as he was kindly treated. But, of course, Squinty could not do this. Instead, he could only grunt and squeal. The boy tied a string to Squinty's leg and let him out of the pen. The comical little pig was glad to have more room in which to move about. He walked first to one side and then the other, rooting in the dirt with his funny, rubbery nose, The boy laughed to see him. I guess you are looking for something to eat, the boy said. Well, let's see if you can find these acorns. The boy hid them under a pile of dirt and watched. Squinty smelled about and sniffed. He could easily tell where the acorns had been hidden, and a moment later he had rooted them up and was eating them. Oh, you funny little pig, cried the boy. You are real smart. You know how to find acorns. That is one trick. Ha! 
If that is a trick, it is a very easy one. Just rooting up acorns, thought Squinty to himself. Squinty walked around as far as the rope tied to his leg would let him. The other end of the rope was held by the boy. Once the rope got tangled around Squinty's foot and he jumped over it to get free, the boy saw him and cried, Oh, I wonder if I could teach you to jump the rope. That would be a fine trick. Let me see. The boy thought a moment and then lifted Squinty up and set him down on one side of the rope, which he raised a little way from the ground, just as girls do when they are playing a skipping game. On the other side of the rope, the boy put an apple. Now, Squinty, said Bob, if you want that apple, you must jump the rope to get it. Come on. At first, Squinty did not understand what was wanted of him. He saw nothing but the apple and thought how much he wanted it. He started for it, but before he could get it, the boy pulled up the rope in front of him. The rope stopped Squinty. Jump over the rope if you want the apple, said the boy. Of course, Squinty could not exactly understand this talk. He tried once more to get the apple, but every time he did, he found the rope in front of him in the way. Well, exclaimed Squinty to himself, I am going to get that apple, rope or no rope. I guess I'll have to get over the rope somehow. So the next time he started for the juicy apple and the rope was pulled up in front of him, Squinty gave a little spring and over the rope he went, jumping with all four legs, coming down on the other side like a circus man jumping over the elephant's back. Oh, fine, good, cried the boy, clapping his hands. Squinty has learned to do another trick. Oof, oof, grunted Squinty as he chewed the apple. So that's another trick, is it? Chapter 8. Squinty in the Woods Bob, the boy who had bought Squinty the comical pig, laughed and clapped his hands. His two sisters, who were playing with their dolls in the shade of an evergreen tree, heard their brother, and one of them called out, What is it, Bob? What is it? Oh, come and see my pig do a trick, answered the boy. He is too funny for anything. Can he really do a trick? asked the smaller sister, whose name was Molly. Indeed he can, the boy said. He can do two tricks. Find hidden acorns and jump a rope. Oh, no, not really jump a rope, cried Sally. You just come and see, the boy called. All this while Squinty was chewing on the apple, which he had picked up from the ground after he had jumped over the rope. He heard what the boy said, and Squinty made up his mind. Well, said the little pig to himself, if it is any fun for that boy and his sisters to watch me jump over a rope and dig up acorns, I don't mind doing it for them. They call them tricks, but I call it getting something to eat. And they were both right, you see. Sally and Molly, the two sisters, laid down their dolls in the shade and ran over toward their brother, who still held one end of the rope that was fast to Squinty's leg. Make him do some tricks for us, begged Molly. Show us how he jumps the rope, said Sally. First, I'll have him dig up the acorns, as that's easier, spoke Bob. Here, Squinty, he called. Find the acorns, find them. While Squinty had been munching on the apple, the boy had dug a hole, put some sweet acorn nuts into it, and covered them up with dirt. Squinty had not seen him do this, but Squinty thought he could find the nuts just the same. There were two ways of doing this. Squinty had a very sharp-smelling nose. He could smell things afar off that neither you nor I could smell even close by. And Squinty could also tell by digging in the ground with his queer rubbery nose just where the ground was soft and where it was hard. And he knew it would be soft at the place where the boy had dug a hole in which to hide the acorns. So when Bob called Squinty to come and find the acorn nuts, even though the little pig had not seen just where they were hidden, Squinty felt sure he could dig them up. He'll never find them, said Sally. Just you watch, exclaimed the boy. He pulled on the rope around Squinty's leg. At first, the little pig was not quite sure what was wanted of him. He thought perhaps he was to jump over the rope after another apple. 
but he saw no fruit waiting for him. Then he looked carefully about and smelled the air. The boy was very gentle with him and waited patiently. And I might say right here that if you ever try to teach your pets any tricks, you must be both kind and gentle with them, for you know they are not as smart as you are and cannot think as quickly. Ha! I smell acorns, thought Squinty to himself. I guess the boy must want me to do the first trick, as he calls it, and dig up the acorns. I'll do it. Carefully, Squinty sniffed the air. When he turned one way, he could smell the acorns quite plainly. When he turned the other way, he could not smell them quite so well. So he started off in the direction where he could most plainly smell the nuts he loved so well. Next, he began rooting in the ground. At first, it was very hard for his nose, but soon it became soft. Then he could smell the acorns more plainly than before. See, he is going right toward them, cried the boy. There, he has them, exclaimed Sally. Oh, so he has, spoke Molly. I wouldn't have thought he could. And by that time, Squinty had found the hole where the boy had covered the acorns with dirt, and Squinty was chewing the sweet nuts. Now make him jump the rope, said Molly. I will, as soon as he eats the acorns, replied the boy. Ha! I am going to have another apple just for jumping a rope, thought Squinty in delight. You see, the little pig imagined the trick was done just to get him to eat the apple. He did not count the rope-jumping part of it at all, though that really was what the boy wanted. Once more, Bob placed the apple on the ground on the far side of the rope. One end of the rope the boy held in his hand, and the other was around Squinty's leg, but a loop of it was made fast to a stick stuck in the ground so the boy could pull on the rope and raise or lower it just as you girls do when you play. Come on now, Squinty, jump over it, called the boy. The little pig saw the apple and smelled it. He wanted very much to get it. But when he ran toward it, he found the rope raised up in front of him. He forgot for a moment his second trick and stood still. Oh, I thought you said he would jump the rope, said Molly, rather disappointed. He will. Just wait a minute, spoke the boy. Come on, Squinty, he called. Once more, Squinty started for the apple. This time he remembered that before he had to jump the rope to get it. So he did it again. Over the rope he went with a little jump, coming down on the side where the apple was, and in a second he was chewing the juicy fruit. There, cried the boy. Didn't he jump the rope? Oh, well, but he didn't jump it fast back and forth like we girls do, said Molly. But it was pretty good for a little pig, said Sally. I think so, too, spoke the boy, and I'm going to teach him to jump real fast and without going for an apple each time. I'm going to teach him other tricks, too. Oh, dear, thought Squinty when he heard this. So I am to learn more tricks, it seems. Well, I hope they will all be eating ones. Make him do it again, suggested Molly after a bit. No, I haven't any more apples, the boy answered. And at first, I'll have to make him jump for an apple each time. After a bit, I'll not give him an apple until he has done all his tricks. Come on now, Squinty, back to your pen. The boy lifted up his pet and put him back in the pen that had been especially built for the little pig. As soon as he was in it, Squinty ran over to the trough, hoping there would be some sour milk in it, but there was none. "'You've had enough to eat for a while,' said the boy with a laugh. <laughs> "'Later, I'll give you your milk.' "'Oof, oof,' grunted Squinty, and I suppose he meant he would be glad to have the milk now. But he's got none, so he curled himself up in the clean straw and went to sleep. When he awakened, he thought at first he was back in the pen at home.' And he cried out, Oh, woof, woof, oh, twisty tail, I had the queerest dream. I thought a boy had me and that I could jump a rope and hunt acorns and do lots of tricks. But I... <sighs> and then Squinty stopped. He looked around and found himself all alone in the new pen. None of his brothers or sisters was near him, and he could not hear his mama or papa grunting near the feed trough. Ha! Huh? It wasn't a dream after all, thought Squinty a bit sorrowfully. It's all real. I can do tricks, and a boy has me. 
Every few days after that, the boy took Squinty out of his pen and let him do the rope jumping and the acorn hunting tricks. And it did not take Squinty long to learn to jump the rope when there was no apple on the other side. The boy would say, jump over the rope, Squinty, and over it the little pig would go. But if he did not get the apple as soon as he jumped, he did get it afterward, which was just as good. It was sort of a reward for his tricks, you see. Now you must learn a new trick, said the boy one day. I want you to learn how to walk on your hind legs, Squinty. It is not going to be easy either, but I guess you can do it, and I'm going to take the rope off your leg, for I do not believe you will run away from me now. So the rope was taken off Squinty's leg, and he liked the boy so much and liked his new home, and the nuts and apples he got to eat were so good that Squinty did not try to run away. Up on your hind legs, cried the boy, and by taking hold of Squinty's front feet, Bob raised his pet up on the hind legs. Now stand there, the boy cried, but when he took away his hands, of course Squinty came down on all four legs. He did not know what the boy meant to have him do. I guess I'll have to stand you in a corner to start with, the boy said. That will brace you up. Then, kindly and gently, the boy took Squinty over to the place where the corn crib was built onto the barn. This made a corner, and the little pig was stood up on his hind legs in that. Then, with something to lean his back against, he did not feel like falling over and he remained standing up on two legs with his front feet stuck out in front of him. That's the way to do it, cried Bob. Soon you will be able to stand up without anything to lean against, and a little later you will be able to walk on your hind legs. Now here's an apple for you, Squinty. So you see, Squinty received his reward for starting to learn a new trick. In a few days, just as the boy had said, the little pig found that he could sit up on his hind legs all alone without anything to lean back against. But learning to walk on his hind legs was a little harder. The boy, however, was patient and kind to him. At first, Bob held Squinty's front feet and walked along with him so the little pig would get used to the new trick. Then one day, Bob said, Now, Squinty! I want you to walk to me all by yourself. Stand up. Squinty stood up on his hind legs. The boy backed away from him and stood a little distance off, holding out a nice, juicy potato this time. Come and get the potato, called the boy. Squee! Squee! grunted Squinty. I can't. I suppose he meant to say. Come on, cried the boy. Don't be afraid. You can do it. Squinty wanted that potato very much, and the only way to get it was to walk to it on his hind legs. If he let himself down on all four legs, he knew the boy would not give him the potato. So Squinty made up his little pig mind that he would do this new trick. Off he started, walking by himself on his hind legs, just like a trained bear. Fine, that's the way to do it. I knew you could, the boy cried when Squinty reached him and took the potato out of his hand. Good little pig! And he scratched Squinty's back with a stick. Oof, oof, squealed Squinty, very much pleased. And from then on, the comical little pig learned many tricks. He could stand up for a long time on his hind legs with an apple on his nose, and he would not eat it until the boy called, Now, Squinty! Then Squinty would toss the apple up in the air off his nose and catch it as it came down. Oh, how good it tasted! Squinty also learned to march around with the stick for a gun and play soldier. He liked this trick best of all, for he always had two apples to eat after that. Many of Bob's boyfriends came to see his trained pig. They all thought he was very funny and cute, and they laughed very hard when Squinty looked at them with his queer drooping eye. They would feed him apples, potatoes, and sometimes bits of cake that Bob's mother gave them. Squinty grew very fond of cake. Then one day something happened. Bob always used to lock the door of the new pig pen every night, for though he knew his pet was quite tame now, he thought if the door were left open, Squinty might wander away. And that is exactly what Squinty did. 
He did not mean to do wrong, but he knew no better. One evening, after he had done many tricks that day, when Squinty found the door of his pen partway open, he just pushed it the rest of the way with his strong nose, and out he walked. No one saw him. Woof, woof, grunted Squinty, looking about. I guess I'll go take a walk by myself. I may find something good to eat. Out of the pen he went. There was no garden here, such as the farmer had at Squinty's first home, but not far from the pig pen was the big green wood. I'll go over in there and see what happens, thought Squinty. Perhaps I may find some acorns. And so Squinty ran away to the woods. Chapter 9 Squinty's Balloon Ride This was the third time Squinty had run away. But not once did he intend to do any wrong. You see, he knew no better. He just found his pen door open and walked out. That was all there was to it. I wonder what will happen to me this time, thought the comical little pig as he hurried along over the ground toward the woods. I don't believe Don the dog will find me here, for he must be back on the farm. But some other dog might. I had better be careful, I guess. When Squinty thought this, he stopped and looked carefully around for any signs of a barking dog, but he saw none. It was very still and quiet, for it was nearly supper time in the big house where Bob lived, and he and his sisters were waiting for the bell to ring to call them to the table. But Squinty had had his supper, and for the time, he was not hungry. And if I do get hungry again, I may find something in the woods, he said to himself, Acorn nuts grow in the woods, and they are very good. I'll root up some of them. Once or twice, Squinty looked back toward the pen he had run away from to see if Bob, his master, were coming after him. But Bob had no idea his little pet had run away. In fact, just then, Bob was wondering what new trick he could teach Squinty the next day. On and on ran the comical pig. Once he found something round and yellow on the ground. That looks like a yellow apple, thought Squinty, and he bit it hard with his white teeth. Then his mouth all puckered up. He felt a sour taste, and he cried out, Wow, I don't like that. Oh, that isn't an apple at all. And it wasn't. It was a lemon the grocery boy had dropped. Oh, how sour, grunted Squinty. I'd like a drink of water to take the taste of that out of my mouth. Squinty lifted his nose up in the air and sniffed and snuffed. He wanted to try to smell a spring of water, and he did, just on the edge of the big wood. Over to the spring he ran on his little short legs, and soon he was having a fine drink. Now I feel better, Squinty said. What will happen next? Nothing did for some time, and when it did, it was so strange that Squinty never forgot it as long as he lived. I'll tell you all about it. He walked on through the woods, Squinty did, and before very long, he found some acorns. He ate as many as he wanted, and then, as he always felt sleepy after he had eaten, he thought he would lie down and have a nap. He found a place near a big stump where there was a soft bed of dried leaves nearly as nice as his straw bed in the pen at home. On this he stretched out and soon he was fast asleep. When Squinty awoke it was real dark. He jumped up with a little grunt and said to himself, Well, I did not mean to stay away from my pen so long. I guess I had better go back. Squinty started to go back the way he had come but I guess you can imagine what happened. It was so dark, he could not find the path. He walked about, stumbling over sticks and stones and stumps, sometimes falling down on soft moss and again on the hard ground. Finally, Squinty thought, Well, it is of no use. I can't get back tonight, that is sure. I shall have to stay here. Oh, dear, I hope there are no dogs to bite me. Squinty listened carefully. He could hear no barks. He hunted around in the dark until he found another soft bed of leaves, and on that he cuddled himself up to go to sleep for the night. He was a little afraid, but after all, 
He was used to sleeping alone, and even though he was outside of his pen now, he did not worry much. In the morning, I shall go back to the boy who taught me tricks, thought Squinty. But something else happened in the morning. Squinty was awake when the sun first peeped up from behind the clouds. The little pig scratched his ear where a mosquito had bitten him during the night. Then he stretched first one leg and then the others and said, Ha! Ho! Hum! Huff! Huff! I guess I'll have some acorns for my breakfast. It was a very easy matter for Squinty to get his breakfast. He did not have to wash or comb his hair or even dress. Just as he was, he got up out of his leaf bed and began rooting around in the ground for acorns. He soon found all he had wanted and ate them. Then he felt thirsty, so he looked around until he had found another spring of cool water where he drank as much as he needed. And now to go back home to the boy who taught me tricks, said Squinty to himself. I guess he is wondering where I am. And indeed that boy Bob and his sisters Molly and Sally were wondering where Squinty was. They saw the open door of the pen, and the boy recalled that he had forgotten to lock it. Oh, Squinty is gone, he cried, and he felt very badly indeed. But I have no time to tell you more of that boy now. I must relate for you the wonderful adventures of Squinty. Squinty went this way and that through the woods, but he could not find the path that led to his pen. He tried and tried again, but it was of no use. Well, said Squinty at last, sitting down beside a hollow log, I guess I am lost. That is all there is to it. I am lost in the big woods. Oh, dear. I almost wish Don the dog or the farmer would come and find me now. He waited, but no one came. He listened, but he heard nothing. Well, I might as well eat and go to sleep again, said Squinty. Maybe something will happen then. Soon he was asleep again, but he was suddenly awakened. He heard a great crashing in the trees over his head. Gracious! I hope that isn't a dog after me, cried the little pig. He looked up, Squinty did. He saw coming down from the sky through the branches of the trees a big round thing, like more than 10,000 rubber balls made into one. Below the round thing hung a square basket with many ropes and other things fast to it. And in the basket were two men. They looked over the edge of the basket. One of them pulled on a rope, and the big thing, which was a balloon, though Squinty did not know it, came to the ground with a bang. Well, at last we have made a landing, said one of the men. Yes, said the other, and we shall have to throw out some bags of sand to go up again. Squinty did not know what this meant, but I'll explain to you that a landing is when a balloon comes down to the ground, and when the men in it want to go up again, they have to toss out some of the bags of sand or ballast they carry to make the balloon so light that the gas in it will take it up again. The men began tossing out the bags of sand. Squinty saw them, but he was not afraid. Why should he be? For no men or boys had ever been cruel to him. Puff, puff, grunted Squinty, getting up and going over to one of the bags of sand. Maybe that is good to eat, he thought. If it is, I will take a bite. I am hungry. Oh, look at that pig, suddenly called one of the men in the balloon basket. Sure enough, it is a pig, exclaimed the other. And what a comical little chap he is, he went on. See the funny way he looks at you? At that moment, Squinty looked up, as he often did, with one eye partly closed, the other open, and with one ear cocked frontwards and the other backwards. Say, he's a cute one, all right, said the first man. Let's take him along. What for? asked his friend. We'd only have to toss out as much sand as he weighs so we could go up. Oh, let's take him along anyhow, insisted the other. Maybe he'll be a mascot for us. Well, if he's a mascot, all right, then we'll take him. We need some good luck on this trip. Squinty did not know what a mascot was. Perhaps he thought it was something good to eat. But I might say that a mascot is something which some persons think bring them good luck. 
Often, baseball nines or football elevens will have a small boy or a goat or a dog whom they call their mascot. They take him along whenever they play games, thinking the mascot helps them to win. Of course, it really does not. But there is no harm in a mascot anyhow. Yes, we'll take him along in the balloon with us, said the taller of the two men. See, he doesn't seem to be a bit afraid. No, and look, he must be a trick pig. Maybe he got away from some circus, cried the other man. For at that moment, Squinty stood up on his hind legs as the boy had taught him and walked over toward the big balloon basket. What he really wanted was something to eat, but the men did not know that. He surely is a cute little pig, cried the tall man. I'll lift him in. You toss out another bag of sand and we'll go up. The next moment, before he could get out of the man's grasp, if he had wanted to, Squinty felt himself lifted off the ground. He was put down in the bottom of the basket, which held many things, and a second later, Squinty the comical pig felt himself flying upward through the air. Squinty was off on a trip in a balloon. Chapter 10. Squinty and the Squirrel Up, up, and up some more went Squinty the comical pig. At first, the fast motion in the balloon made him a little dizzy just as it might make you feel queer the first time you went on the merry-go-round. Uff, uff, grunted Squinty. He was so surprised at this sudden adventure that really he did not know what to say. I wonder if he's afraid, said one of the men. He acts so, the other answered, but he'll get used to it. How high up are you going? Oh, about a mile, I guess. Squinty. Squinty cuddled down in the basket of the balloon between two bags full of something and shivered. My goodness me, thought poor Squinty, a mile up in the air, that's awfully high. He knew about how far a mile was on land, for it was about the distance from the farmhouse near where his pen used to be to the village church. He had often heard the farmer man say so. And if it was a mile from my pen to church... And that mile of road was stood straight up in the air, thought Squinty. It would be a terrible long way to fall. I hope I don't fall. And it did not seem as if he would, at least not right away. The basket in which he was riding looked good and strong. Squinty had shut his eyes when he heard the men speak about going a mile up in the air. But now, as the balloon seemed to have stopped rising, the little pig opened his eyes again and peered all about him. Look, exclaimed one of the men with a laugh. Hasn't that pig the most comical face you ever saw? That's what he has, answered the other. He makes me want to laugh every time I look at him with that funny half-shut eye of his. Well, thought Squinty, I'm glad somebody is happy and jolly and wants to laugh, for I'm sure I don't. I wish I hadn't run away from the nice boy who taught me the tricks. Then, as Squinty remembered how he had been taught to stand up on his hind legs, he thought he would do that trick now. He was hungry, and he imagined perhaps if he did that trick, the men would give him something to eat. Look at the little chap, cried one of the men. He's showing off all right. Yes, he's a smart pig, said the other. He must be a trick pig, and I guess whoever owns him will be sorry he is lost. Huh, I'm sorry myself, thought Squinty to himself as he walked around on his hind legs. I wonder if these men are ever going to give me anything to eat, he went on. He looked at them from his queer squinting eye, but the men did not seem to know that the little pig was hungry. On and on sailed the balloon, being blown by the wind like a sailboat. Squinty dropped down on his four legs, since he found that walking on his hind ones brought him no food. Then, as he made his way about the basket, he saw some more of those queer bags filled with something. There was a great many of them in the balloon, and Squinty thought they must have something good in them. Squinty squatted down beside one, and with his strong teeth, he soon had bitten a hole in the cloth. Then he took a big bite, but oh dear! All at once, he found his mouth filled with coarse sand that gritted on his teeth and made the cold shivers run down his back. Oh, wow, thought poor Squinty. That's no good sand. 
I wonder if those men eat sand. Of course they didn't. The sand in the bags was ballast. The balloon men carried it with them, and when they found the balloon coming down because some of the gas had leaked out of the round ball above the basket, they would let some of the sand run out of the bags to the ground below. This would make the balloon lighter, and it would rise again. Squee! Squee! Oof! Oof! grunted Squinty as he wiped the sand off his tongue on one of his legs. I don't like that. I'm hungry. Why... What's the matter with the little pig? asked one of the men, turning around and looking at Squinty. He must be hungry, said the other. See, he has bitten a hole in one of our sandbags. Let's feed him. All right, give him something to eat. But we didn't bring any pig food along with us. I'll give him some bread and milk, the other man said. We won't want much more ourselves, for we are nearly at our last landing place. Squee! Squee! squealed Squinty when he heard this. He watched the man put some bread and milk in a tin pan and set it down on the floor of the basket. Then Squinty put his nose in the dish and began to eat. And oh, how good it tasted! Of course, the milk was sweet instead of sour, for men do not usually like sour milk. Squinty had a good meal, and then he went to sleep. What happened while Squinty slept, the little pig did not know. But when he woke up, it was all dark, and he knew it must be night, so he went to sleep again. And the next time he awakened, the sun was shining, so he felt sure it was morning. And then, all of a sudden, something happened. One of the men called out, This is a good place to land. Yes, we'll go down here, agreed the other. Then he pulled a string. Squinty did not know what it was for, but I'll tell you. It was to open a hole in the balloon so the gas would rush out. Then the balloon would begin to fall. And that is what happened. Down, down went the balloon. It went very fast, and Squinty felt dizzy. Faster and faster fell the balloon, until at last it gave such a bump down on the ground that Squinty was bounced right over the side of the basket. Right out of the basket, the comical little pig was bounced, but he came down in a soft bed of leaves, so he was not hurt in the least. He landed on his feet, just like a cat, and gave a loud squeal. He was so surprised. And then Squinty ran away. Almost anybody would have run, too, I guess, after falling down in a balloon and being bounced out that way. Squinty had had enough of balloon riding. I don't know where I'm going, nor what will happen to me now, thought Squinty, but I am going to run and hide. And run he did. He found himself in the woods, just the same kind of woods as where he had first met the two balloon men, only, of course, it was much farther off, for he had traveled a long way through the air. On and on ran Squinty. All at once, in a tree over his head, he heard a funny chattering noise. Chipper, 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 chat, chat went the noise. Squinty looked up in the tree, and there he saw a lovely little girl squirrel frisking about on the branches. Then Squinty was no longer afraid. Out of the leaves he jumped, giving a squeal and a grunt, which meant, Oh, how do you do? I'm glad to see you. My name is Squinty. What is your name? My name is Slicko, answered the little lively girl squirrel as she jumped about. 